Good evening, gardeners. It's Thursday, April 1st, and no joke, we have a severe cold front that is moving into the southeastern coast of North Carolina, and I've been covering my plants all day, uh, preparing for a potential frost. And in doing this, I went into my hinged hoop house where I have a small lemon tree that is growing in there in a small one gallon container that you see right here. And I have not checked on this tree for probably the past week or so uh, because it's been so warm and so nice out. And when I checked, much to my surprise, uh, it was covered in a spider mite infestation. The telltale signs of a spider mite infestation is discoloration to the leaves. They are usually uh, patchy with yellow blotches. And when you look really closely, you can see those disgusting red bodies of those horrible spider mites that colonize all over your leaves and they suck the life out of your leaves and eventually kill the tree. So when I saw this, I knew that I had to take action and I need to save this otherwise beautiful lemon seedling. Now, spider mites are a very tricky problem because they can't be treated like normal insects. I typically have no problem using natural pesticides in my garden. I love using pyrethrin concentrate. I love using spinosad concentrate. They are both natural concentrate insecticides that are broad spectrum and kill a wide variety of insects, but they're not really all that effective for spider mites. Spider mites, you actually need to use some type of miticide. And the majority of miticides out there are typically harsh chemicals that I really don't wanna spray on my plants if I don't have to. Luckily, there are ways to deal with spider mites, and that's what I want to talk about in this video. Insect problems can easily overwhelm your garden, so it's a really good idea to try and attack them at the first sign of any kind of problem. And a lot of times people go out and they get chemical sprays or natural pesticides and they wind up spraying down their plants. But that's really the last thing you should do. The first thing you should do is try to physically remove the pests themselves. And this is often overlooked. If you're going to grab some kind of insecticide or pesticide off the shelf, it's a lot for that pesticide to try and wipe out an entire thriving population. But simply doing things like taking a hose and putting an attachment on with a jet setting and blowing off your trees first to try and disrupt the population and blow them off is one of the top things that you can do to actually reduce the pest population. And that is what I did with this tree right here. The first thing I did was I put it out to the middle of my yard and I put my nozzle on the jet setting and I just blew the tree off. And simply doing that, I was probably able to simply blow off more than half the mites on this tree. And cutting down the majority of the population like that makes it that much easier when we actually break out the pesticides to eradicate the remainder. Now the nice thing about using a pressure jet to blow off pests from your trees is that you can do it on trees of pretty much any size. Whether they're larger trees in ground or larger trees in containers, you can blow them off and greatly reduce the pest population on your plants. When it comes to these smaller plants right here that are only in one gallon containers or so, another way of physically removing them is to dunk them in some type of soapy solution. So right here I have a deep plastic container and I simply put a little bit of dish soap in there and I used my hose to make a nice foamy sudsy bath and then I used these paint stirrers right here that are being held on with these bricks to actually hold the plant down underwater. So right here, I have a couple of bricks that are holding down some paint stirrers, and then these paint stirrers are holding this one gallon pot with my tree in place. You can see the paint stirrers right here. They're keeping the bottom of the pot from completely falling in. And this plant has been submerged here for about six hours. And what it is doing is any of the mites that I wasn't able to physically blow off with the jet setting of the hose, I'm effectively drowning them. So now when I pull this plant out, it is almost guaranteed that I've probably reduced 90 to 100% of the mite population. I physically was able to remove almost all of them. So now when I go the pesticide route, I'm only going to have to deal with a very small quantity of mites instead of a major infestation. So I'm going to pick this out right here and you can see what I did was I wrapped the bottom right here in foil because I didn't want any of the soapy solution to get into my soil and I didn't want any of the soil to fall out. So use some aluminum foil or plastic wrap or duct tape or something to hold it together before you do your dunk. So now that the plant has been removed from the soapy dunk, I'm just going to wash all of the soapy water off again with the jet setting 
of my nozzle. Now I mentioned before that many pesticides that you use in your garden do not work at all or very well on spider mites. But one thing that does work very well on spider mites is sulfur dust. And here you can see a sulfur dust product that I picked up at a big box store. If you're curious where to get this from, uh, you can check your local big box store, but I also have sulfur dust linked in my Amazon storefront in the video description, just in case it's too hard for you to find. Now this product right here is wettable sulfur, which means it can be mixed in water. And I like the wettable sulfur better because it can be applied more evenly than a dust, and it's pretty windy out right now. So simply checking the instructions, and please check them because the concentrate varies uh, based on the fruit tree. It says for citrus, for thrips, flat mites, yuma spider mites, six spotted mites, and uh, citrus rust mites, dust or spray at a concentration of two tablespoons per gallon of water when pests first appear and repeat as necessary. Avoid application during high temperatures. Do not apply within two months of an oil application. And that is very important because sulfur reacts with oil. So if you recently sprayed with a horticultural oil or a vegetable oil or with oil-based concentrates like pyrethrin, if you use this, you can burn up your tree. So my tree has never been treated before, so I'm able to use this. So in this spray bottle right here, uh, I, have, I will have 16 ounces of water, and 16 ounces of water is one eighth of a gallon. So I need to put in two eighths of a tablespoon, which is slightly less than one teaspoon. So I'm going to take my little teaspoon right here, and I'm going to fill it uh, three quarters of the way because um, two eighths of a tablespoon is three quarters of a teaspoon. So I'm gonna put that in this funnel right here and then fill it with the remainder of the water and in this little spray bottle right here I have 16 ounces of sprayable wettable sulfur so I'm going to mix this together shake it up and then I'm going to spray down my citrus tree um, and remember uh, you need to spray under the leaves because a lot of these annoying pests they love to colonize underneath the leaves because they hide them from predators, they hide them from sun and hot temperatures. So remember, uh, don't just spray the tops of the leaves. So now the wettable sulfur has been applied to the citrus tree. I'm going to allow it to dry on the citrus tree. And uh, once it dries, I'll check back in another day or so, and I will verify that the spider mite infestation has stopped on this tree. Um, even if I don't see any spider mites, I will probably treat it again in another seven days just to be sure that they are controlled. If I do see spider mites, I may need to spray it another two times. Uh, once in seven days and then once in 14 days from now. So you really need to monitor your tree and make sure that they're being taken care of. And remember, before you apply it every single time, make sure that you vigorously blow it off with the hose. And if it's a smaller potted plant like this, dunk it in the water to try and get the, uh, the majority of the pest population off your tree before you start using chemicals. And that right there is how you can control a spider mite infestation. So everybody, I hope you found this video helpful. If you did, please make sure to hit that like button. And if you haven't already subscribed to the channel, please subscribe for future updates and more videos like these. If you're curious about the sulfur product that I use or any of the products that I use in general, they are all linked in my Amazon storefront in the video description. Thank you all again so much for watching and I hope to see all of you again on the next video. <laughs> Nobody catches Dale. Whoa! Nobody catches Dale. Whoa! Back it up. What is that, Mr. Tobe? Are you a grumpy boy? <laughs> When, when the strawberries are coming out, like, feet slipping on the uh, fence in there. Hi, buddy.
He hasn't really gotten used he, to the he, he, he like hardwood guy. floor. He slides all over the floor. <laughs> oh my god, it's hilarious. That was a good run in.